Romans chapter 8 and reading verse 2. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. And I want to talk to you for a few moments, the law of the Spirit of life. The law of the Spirit of life. God, we love you and praise you. Thank you so much for those that are here. Thank you, Lord. They've come to worship you. They've made sacrifice to be here, and I thank you for it. Thank you, Lord, for your word. I pray that you would speak to our heart. And, and Lord, I pray that tonight somebody is going to receive something very special that is just for them. And I say it in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Shake hands with someone before you're seated. And you can be seated. There's a words to a song that I used to sing. I, I sang the song often, and so these, these words actually got burnt into my head. But it says, You can have Huxley, Herman Hess, and Socrates, and all the human knowledge of this world's philosophy, but I have a higher law that's working in me. God gave birth to my spirit, and he set my life free. I'm going to rise so high when my spirit spreads its wings across the sky the risen one is coming to take me away i'm gonna live forever in his kingdom someday anybody looking forward to that day hallelujah one day this spirit that is inside of us is going to get us out of here hallelujah one day we are going to spread our wings and fly one day, because there is another law that is at work inside of us. Oh, hallelujah. Aren't you thankful? Aren't you thankful for the Spirit of the Almighty God? Aren't you thankful for the blessings that come from living for the Lord? I say praise God. Praise God for this New Testament that we have. Aren't you glad that it, the word didn't stop at Malachi? Oh, praise God that you can open up your Bible and then you go to the, the Gospels. Somebody say good news. Boy, that's good news right there. Matthew and Mark and Luke and John, when you began to read of the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ, and you began to read about life that has come. Oh, glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. Thank the Lord for the New Testament, and praise God, we can say Jesus has come that we may have life. Praise God, praise God. Amen. Because of the life of Jesus Christ and the death and his burial and his resurrection, there is a higher law. There is another law that is working. And we are all blessed by it. There is another law that is working. It is the law of the Spirit of life. Jesus said in John 10 and 10, The thief cometh not but to steal and to kill and to destroy. But I have come. Praise the Lord. I'm glad to hear that. I have come that you may have life and that you may have it more abundantly. Satan, his will, his will is to destroy. His will is to destroy your body. His will is to destroy your soul. His will is to destroy your spirit. But God's will is to heal our body. Come on, I'm going to hang out a little bit with this. God's will is to heal 
our body. God's will is to heal our soul. God's will is to heal our spirit. God's will, God's will is to give you life. God's will is to bring healing to that which has been affected by the curse of sin. Oh, come on, somebody. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank the Lord for this great mercy. Thank the Lord for this grace. Thank the Lord, thank the Lord, thank the Lord. Amen. Humanity, they messed up in the beginning. In the Garden of Eden, they messed up. Genesis 2 and 17, of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. And because Adam and Eve broke the commandment of the Lord, the results of that sin and that disobedience, it was death for the entire human race. Adam and Eve died a spiritual death instantly, instantly, immediately. As the sin that they committed slashed the cords of fellowship between God and mankind, physical death began to lay its hands and tentacles upon their bodies, their mind, their spirit. And after a period of time, that body which was perfect and fashioned by God began to succumb to sickness and disease, and it began to die. But thank God the Lord had a plan. Thank God he had a plan. Thank God he had a plan that went beyond the blood of man, that went beyond the genealogy of the blood that comes down from the past. Thank God that somewhere between that bloodline of the curse and the receiving today of that which comes from God, there was a cross that was raised up. And the Lord said, if you will lift me up, I'll draw men unto me. Uh, hallelujah. I'm going to bring healing. Uh, I'm going to change uh, what's happening. Uh, you will not have to stand and say, well, uh, you know my bloodline, uh, we got cancer in it and uh, we've got this in it and we've got blood issues in it. We've got bone disease in it and uh, the boy, well, what about your great grandfather and your great great grandfather? Friend, I stand today and plead the blood of Jesus Christ. Uh, I don't care what our past has uh, in its bloodline. There's something else there. There is another law that is at work there. And it is the law of the spirit of life. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, let's praise him for a minute. Let's praise the Lord for a minute. Come on, praise him. Praise him with your faith. Praise him. Let all the doubt leave your mind and your spirit and begin getting a hold of this which comes from the living word of God. The Lord had a plan, and that plan was I'm going to redeem mankind back to myself. And it consisted of more than just the forgiveness of sin. His plan was to do more than restore you spiritually. His plan was to do more than just restore the spiritual dying. But it consists of the restoration of a physical body. Come on, come on. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. I'm laying hold of this tonight. I'm laying hold of this word for me tonight. Come on, there's healing in it. There's healing in it. There's healing in it. There's healing in it. There's power in it. There's deliverance in it. Glory, glory. Somebody say it's for me. It's for me, it's for me, it's for me. Glory to God, glory to God. Prophecy, Isaiah 53 and 5, prophesying what was to come. It said, he was wounded for our transgressions. 
He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. And with his stripes, we are healed. Notice the prophecy. Two things that are covered there in that law, that redemptive work that was done at Calvary. His blood was shed to cover our transgressions. His blood was shed to cover our iniquities, which is sin. But that is not all. I don't care what's going on around me. I don't care what I hear from other things or other people or I even see with my fleshly abilities. There's something beyond all of that and I choose to walk by faith and not by sight. I choose to walk by faith in the living word of God. He has come that we may be healed. He has come that we may be healed. He has come to heal our bodies from that physical sickness and disease that would come upon us. Oh, come on, Brother Molina. My God, my God, hallelujah, hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, if you got sickness in your body tonight, you need to say, it's for me. This is for me. And I receive it in the name of Jesus. I receive it in my spirit, in my mind, in my body. I receive the works of the redemption of the almighty God of glory. Glory. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. 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 In any given service, we can expect and we can believe that our sins have been forgiven. Oh, glory. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If any man says he has no sin, he deceives himself, and the truth is not in him. It's what the Bible said. We deceive ourselves. Hallelujah. The Apostle Paul said, I die daily. I repent. I crucify this flesh daily. Hallelujah. But friend, when you do repent, you should expect and believe without a shadow of a doubt in your mind. You have been forgiven. You have been forgiven. Hallelujah. And in every service, we should expect and believe I have been healed. Come on, somebody. If he said he forgives you, he also said I put healing in it. I have been healed. I have been healed. I have been healed. I have been healed. It's easy. It's easy to believe that it is the divine will of God for us and others to be forgiven of whatever their sins may be. It is easy for us to accept that it has taken place and we're not doubting it. We believe it's happened that that sinner has just left free. Come on. I believe it 100% with all my heart. I don't care who's sitting on that pew. They hear the word of the Lord and faith comes by hearing. And then they begin to do what it says and they repent of their sin. They're forgiven. But we have trouble believing and accepting it is the divine will of God. For us or someone else to be healed. 
But forgiveness and healing work together. Oh, hallelujah. I said forgiveness and healing work together under the law of the spirit of life. Oh, glory. Come on. I'm almost going to get a little bit happy. Hallelujah. Under the law of the spirit of life, that mercy and forgiveness and healing, it works together. James chapter 5, verse 14. Is anyone sick? He should call the elders of the church to pray over and anoint him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. And the Lord will raise him up. And if he has sinned, he'll be forgiven. Therefore... We have a problem with this right here because of our pride. Confess your sins to one another. Pray for one another that you may be healed. And that righteous prayer is powerful and it's effective. Oh, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. We would have more of this today if we weren't so afraid that somebody is going to use what they just heard against us and hurt us. There's a lot of untrust, 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 a lot of untrust. But I'm telling you, he said, you're going to get forgiveness and you're going to be healed. Spirit of life will be at work. And it will do its work. What is he talking about? You've got to have faith and forgiveness. You've got to have faith in healing. If we can expect it, if we can believe it and not doubt, we can be recipients of the word of the Lord. And there's healing. There's healing for our soul. There's healing for our soul. There's healing for our body. We should expect and not doubt that God is healing us physically, emotionally, mentally. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. God is working the healing power in our lives and in our bodies. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. It is the will of God. For the New Testament, spirit-filled church to expect to be forgiven and expect to be healed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's the will of God. That's the word of God. We got to get rid of our doubt barrier. And every one of us in here have it. We've got to get rid of the doubt barrier about it's the will of God to heal our body. Get that doubt barrier out of your mind. It is the will of God to heal your body. It is the will of God to heal my body. It is the will of God to forgive us of our sins. It is the will of God. That is the purpose that he came. If you want forgiveness, if you want to be healed, friend, repent of your sin. Receive the word of God. Receive the word of life. Receive the blessing that comes from it. There's life in it. If you want healing, Healing. Uh, receive the Holy Ghost. Uh, receive the Holy Ghost. Uh, receive it like the Bible said. Uh, receive it to where you begin speaking in another language uh, as you are moved by the mighty power of God that saturates everything in your very being. Uh, and that tongue that is the most unruly member in your body has become free to be moved by the power of the living Spirit of God that is inside of you said out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water hallelujah living water living there's life there's a, a spirit of life that is inside of you 
I'll never forget. Never forget going to a camp meeting service, listening to Elder Barnes as he speaks and prophesies, preaches healing. One thing he said, he said, there is a time to be born, and there is a time to die. But it's not the will of God for us to suffer with disease and pain in between. There's a time to be born and there is a time to die. Hallelujah. But it's not the will of God. Hallelujah. And he claimed it. He kept claiming. He kept claiming. He kept claiming it. Kept preaching. Kept believing it. Hallelujah. I believe this. I believe this. I believe this. The Lord has come that you may have life. He has come to give you forgiveness and to also heal your body. The power that is in that blood. I believe the healing that is in the blood of Jesus Christ. And that has come with the spirit of life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We come to church regularly, faithfully, because we expect and we believe in living in a continual renewing. We don't just come to go through a religious move thing. We don't just, well, we're here again because we want religion. We believe that there is a refreshing, a renewing, a restoring, a restoration. And we come frequently, continually, hallelujah, wanting to move in that restoration, being renewed and refreshed, hallelujah, forgiven of our sin. Again today, we can all leave here with the great mercy of the Lord. Lord forgives us. We repent, Lord. Cleanse my heart. Wash me, God. If there's anything in me you don't like, remove it from me and forgive me. Oh, come on. Come on. One more time. One more time. One more time. I get to enjoy the blessings of the Lord, renewing and refreshing and restoration. The Apostle Paul said in Romans 8, beginning in verse 1, There is therefore no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus who walked not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Verse 2. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made us free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, he condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteousness of the law may be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh but after the Spirit. For they that are after the flesh mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the Spirit the things of the Spirit. To be carnally minded, it's death, but to be spiritually minded, it's life and it's peace. Somebody say praise the Lord. Somebody say praise the Lord. We're here because we're following after the Spirit. We want to live a life of the Spirit. We want to say no to the old flesh. Every time the flesh rises back up, I say no, 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 no. Hallelujah, no 
to the flesh. I want to walk in the spirit. I want to live in the spirit. I want to follow after the spirit. I want to be spiritually minded. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made us free from the law of sin and death. I said a while ago what the scripture says, if any man says he hath no sin, he deceives himself and the truth is not in him. According to the law, the Old Testament law, if you failed in one area anywhere through that law, you have failed all. And the wages and the punishment for sin is death. Romans 8 and 23 and 23, for all have sinned, and they have come short of the glory of God. Romans 6 and 23, and the wages of sin is death. But praise God, the gift of God, it's eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Aren't you thankful God had a plan? Come on, aren't you thankful God had a plan? Aren't you thankful God had a plan? Said, I'm going to redeem humanity back to myself. Hallelujah. That veil that separates us is going to be torn down. And humanity's going to have an opportunity once again to be in my presence, in the glorious place of the Lord. Praise God for that. We can sit in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. Oh, praise the Lord. That's a good thing right there. That's a good thing to hear. The Lord had a plan of salvation, the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ uh, and receiving uh, of his spirit uh, because there is another law at work. It's the spirit of life. 2 Corinthians 3 and 6. I can preach this message. This is telling us, ministers, you have been made able ministers of the New Testament. This is good, Brother Dave. <laughs> able ministers of the New Testament, not of the letter, but of the Spirit. The letter killeth, Spirit gives life. The Spirit gives life. The Spirit gives life. Praise God. Our message is life. Life. You can live. You can be forgiven of your sins. You can receive the Spirit of the living God. God, you can live spiritually minded, walk in the spirit, live in the spirit. There's another law that is at work. There is another law than the law of sin and the law of death. That's the law of the spirit of life. Put your hands together with me. Oh, come on, somebody. Clap your hands with me. Let's just rejoice a minute in the Holy Ghost. Oh, praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God. There's another law. There's a higher law that is at work. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The risen one is coming. Oh, to take me away. There is coming a day. I'm going to spread my wings. There's coming a day. I'm going to rise so high. You can have Huxley and Herman and Hess and Socrates if you want all the theologies of this world's philosophy. But I have a higher law. And it's working in me. God gave birth to my spirit. And he set my life free. Hallelujah. In the Old Testament... For those that were obedient to his word. Here's what he said in Exodus 15 and 26. If thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God. And will do that which is right in his sight. Will give ear to his commandments and keep his statutes. I will put none of these diseases upon thee. Which I have brought upon the Egyptians. For I am the Lord that healeth thee. 
Hallelujah. Under the umbrella of the Spirit of God. There is a law at work. The Spirit of life. It's prophesied in Psalms 103 and 1. Bless the Lord, O my soul. And all that is within me, bless His holy name. Sometimes we got to tell that to ourselves. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. That's not talking to your neighbor. It's talking to your soul, your inner being. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. And all that is within me, bless His holy name. Bless the Lord, verse 2. Oh, my soul, and forget not all of his benefits. Who forgives all of thine iniquities and who heals all of your diseases. Come on, somebody, bless him. Come on, somebody, bless him. Bless him. Yeah, but you don't know what I feel right. I said, bless the Lord. Oh, come on. Don't talk to your neighbor. Talk to yourself. Speak down into the depth of your very being. Yeah, but you don't know what I heard from the doctor. I said, come on, somebody. Bless the Lord, oh, my soul. And all that is within me. Bless the Lord and forget not all of his benefits who forgives me of all of my sins and heals me of all of my diseases. Come on, I've got a big question for all of us tonight. How many of us, hallelujah, believe we are forgiven? And how many sins do you believe you are forgiven of? I say all, 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 all. How many of those diseases do you believe God's taken care of? I've got to rise up and say all, all in my blood, in my blood vessels, in my bones, my nerves, and my tendons, my mind, in my spirit, in my heart, in my lungs, and in my kidneys and my pancreas come on in my gallbladder hallelujah 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 the healer the healer the word of the living God I'm breathing because it said live I am breathing because God said live glory to the Lord glory to the Lord hallelujah Come on, musician. Isaiah said he was wounded. I read it before in chapter 53, verse 5. For our transgressions, he was bruised. For our iniquities, a chastisement of our peace is upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. That's a present tense. With his stripes, we are Healed. On the other side of Calvary, on the other side of the tree, on the other side of the death, burial, and resurrection, to that New Testament side, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24, they said, with his own self, he bare our sins in his own body on the tree that we being dead to sin shall live unto righteousness by whose stripes you were healed. Hallelujah. Healing took place. Healing did take place. They experienced that healing virtue. They experienced that healing power. They experienced it. We experience it this very moment right now. Somebody needs to claim your healing. And somebody needs to claim your forgiveness of sins. Hallelujah. You need to claim it. You need to lock hold on it. You need to claim it with everything within you. Hallelujah. The Lord has healed me. The Lord has forgiven me. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. And forget not all of those benefits. Hallelujah. Will you stand with me? 
Just lift your hands with me. Hallelujah. Let's receive it. Believe it. Let it work through you. Work in you. Open up your heart to it. Believe the word of the Lord. Say it. Claim it. Lay hold upon it. Romans chapter 3 verse 3. For what if some did not believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? God forbid. Yea, let God be true. And every man a liar. As it is written, that thou might be justified in the sayings and may overcome when thou art judged. Let God be true and everybody else a liar. Let God be true. Let God's word be true. Come on. Hallelujah. When the promise of God does not happen in your life. Somebody come on. You are not to blame God. You are not to doubt God. Hallelujah. You are not to blame God. And you are not to doubt God. But just keep examining your faith. Keep examining your life. Ask the Holy Ghost to reveal what may be blocking. Ask the Holy Ghost. Come on. Speak in the authority of the name of Jesus. No matter what you have seen or what you have heard, rise back up. Command the devil to take his jump off of you. In that authority of the name of Jesus Christ. In the power of the blood of the Lamb. The stripes that were taken of upon our Lord Jesus Christ healing healing is in this place hi this is Pastor Kevin Martin and I just want to thank y'all for joining us today tuning in and being a part of our service we hope that it was a blessing to you and that you were uplifted and encouraged and felt the presence of the Lord. If you would like to know more about our church, please join us at www.atascacitaupc.com and you will find all of the ministries. You will find pictures where you could take a journey and see everything that's been going on at the Pentecostal Church of Atascacita. And uh, we hope that you join us again very soon. God bless you.